At lately, especially after the Colorado school massacre last month. Tonight, we take you inside some of the darkest corners of the World Wide Web to let you see just what's out there. And we should warn you, some of the things you're about to see are quite disturbing to watch. Fox Spies' Bob Barnard is here with more. Bob? Mike, that's right. These websites are disturbing, but even more alarming is how accessible they are. Tonight, we look at what drives one man to put these graphic images out there. However, we will be not giving out his or any other website addresses because, frankly, we don't want to encourage anyone to go there. But come with us now as we travel inside the World Wide Web and down to Texas to meet the young man behind one of these six sites. He's the self-proclaimed gore master in tonight's Fox 5 investigation. It's everything bad about human nature. It's ugly, it's violent, it's graphic, and it's all on the web. The complete pictures are so revolting we can't, we wouldn't show them to you on television. There's suicides, blood and guts, disease, just sick. And they're only a click away. In, in the perverted section, there's, uh, there's uh, categories of amputees, uh, foreign objects, uh, just, just plain weird uh, stuff. There's uh, defecation photos. From a tiny room inside his Houston trailer home, Michael Hames hosts one of the Internet's most popular websites of this genre, a website about gore. A celebration of everything that's disgusting and nasty. And and guess where most of the roughly 50,000 people a day who visit Hames' website live? Here uh, weekly, it looks like just from Virginia alone, we have uh, over 56,000 people. That's right. His number one viewing area rests in Virginia. Fairfax ranks fourth in the nation. This 24-year-old former computer technician says he doesn't know why that is, but understands people's morbid curiosity. You know, everybody slows down in an accident. You know, it's kind of like the same thing. In the kind of, the of course, the horrid images Hames puts out on his website can appear on computer screens anywhere in the world, including this public library in Loudoun County. Here's a woman hanging on a pole. Now look at that. I mean, look at... Can you imagine what this does to children? State Delegate Dick Black of Sterling is trying to convince fellow Virginia lawmakers to ban indecent images like these from public library and school computers. I mean, this is, I mean, this is a whole picture. And it, the thing is, it integrates intense sexuality with, with brutal murder. And I, we printed some of the more hideous pictures so we didn't have to display them on the library's computer. Here is, here is a naked woman who apparently has been, I assume she has been violently sexually abused and disemboweled. A former Loudoun County Library board member, Black says it's not just the photographs that alarm him, but also websites that, among other things, glorify serial killers and tell you how to make explosives. When we're talking about how do you make a pipe bomb, that's not a study of chemistry. That's a study of how do you kill people. We call them the trench coat mafia because they wear black trench coat every day to school. We're reminded of last month's Colorado high school massacre. They were going around there laughing about it. I mean, they'd shoot somebody, they'd laugh, they'd giggle. Um. The killings at Columbine High have unleashed a new rush of criticism toward the Internet. Well, I think thing that clearly every person that has a personal computer in their home and has children ought to be concerned about monitoring. But from Virginia's top law enforcement officer to Montgomery County's computer well, crime unit, you hear the same yeah, refrain. It's the Wild West. Just about anything goes out there. And not even powerful service providers like America Online can do much, if anything, about it. No one owns the web, and therefore you get sort of the best and the worst of the world out there. You get Even if the worst is universally considered offensive... It's not illegal to put it on a server and dish it out to people, and it's not illegal for people to seek it out. Now, it's, that's different when it comes to child pornography. You know, that, that is, that's pretty much where the line has been drawn at this point. Congress has tried to outlaw child pornography on the net. But those efforts are now being challenged in the courts. AOL and other online safety advocates say the answer may lie in filtering systems, programs that screen out websites and block email and chat rooms depending on your child's age. That's the bottom line. When we talk to people in the community, we want to make sure the parents take a, a strong, uh, active role in their children on the Internet. You may be wondering what inspires people like Michael Hames to sit in his home here in Houston and share with the world 
without interference his vast collection of disgusting photographs and what effect, if any, all those haunting images have on the people who download them. I don't want to sound really sick and demented, but it's a... Um, it, I, I get a personal high from providing people with what they want. And what about the people who want this, who enjoy looking at it? There's, there's, a, there's a very dark side of society. Cliff Van Zandt should know. He used to study criminal behavior for the FBI. I mean, it used to be in days gone by, we would go in and do a search of house, and one of the things we would look for is videos, uh, negative videos. Nowadays, if you go in and do a search, you probably want to search their hard drive of their computer to see what they've downloaded and to look at the list of websites that they've been on. That's exactly what police did in the case of Eric Harris, one of the Colorado killers. They found violent messages on his websites, and while the 18-year-old Harris acted out his morbid fantasies, Michael Haim says there are many other twisted minds out there. The number one request uh, for pictures I have these days are of the Littleton incident, and um, I've just pretty much made a personal choice not to show those, just one, being the tragedy like it is, and two, being children. I try to, you know, sway away from, from anything like that. But almost anything else goes. But people will want to see that. People are dying to see that, and more and more each day. So where does he get his material? Aim says it comes from all kinds of sources, legitimate and otherwise. Got here. Well, these are some pictures we got from uh, from the California Highway Patrol officer. I think it was about. They're snapshots of a motorcycle accident victim who wasn't wearing a helmet. The photos arrived in the mail with a letter. Here are the uh, California Highway Patrol accident pictures that I emailed you about. They are about 10 to 15 years old. I use them to show my kids when they were growing up to teach them about drinking and driving. I enjoy your websites and keep up the good work. Thanks. For That's exactly what Haim says he plans to do as the piles of roadkill on the information superhighway keep growing. For those of you now thinking there ought to be a law, here are two points to ponder. A spokeswoman for the FBI says the federal government has no regulating authority over the Internet, like the Federal Communications Commission has over content aired on radio or TV, and the Child Online Protection Act passed by Congress is now being challenged in federal court. Thank you, Tracy. Such a disturbing story, and, and probably the most disturbing is the desensitizing that takes showing this stuff. I mean, it, it is ironic that they would, the kids in Littleton might have been involved in this, and then now pictures from Littleton would be something that people would want to see. But I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, we I looked at some of this stuff face up, and uh, you've heard the phrase, turn your stomach. Yeah. Oh. It's the first time I think I've ever really the looked nauseous. at something after about five or ten minutes. You feel your stomach turn. All right, so tens of thousands of people are looking at this stuff, and obviously they're probably having the same reaction. Who's doing it? Who's going there to see this stuff? You know, we have no proof that any children are, but I know people who say, hey, you know, after work on a Friday afternoon, we know some of these uh, website addresses and we'll look them up and we'll take a look. So it's probably people in their 20s and 30s who, you know, like maybe have nothing better to do. Kind of a thing, and you know it's there. And if you know it's there and you, and you can maybe get out and take a look, some do it. Again, we don't know that children are, but children are curious. It is really, really creepy. All right, thanks very much, Bob. Mm. As Bob told us in his report about